If you've ever needed to get to or from Melbourne's main airport, you've probably experienced scenes like this. The airport of Australia's second largest or largest city, depending on who you ask, is still only accessible by car or by bus. And anybody who's tried to brave the trip during peak hour traffic can tell you what a nightmare it can be. Now, there have been proposals to link Tullamarine Airport to the city's rail network since the 1960s. But to this day, Melbourne Airport is easily Australia's busiest airport without a rail link. Perhaps the most promising of these proposals came in 2018, when the Victorian state government under Premier Daniel Andrews matched the federal government's $5 billion pledge to finally build the long-awaited airport train link. And this time, things seem to be proceeding well, with early construction beginning in 2022. But just a few months later, in 2023, then-Deputy Premier and Minister for Transport Infrastructure Jacinta Allen announced the project would be indefinitely paused. Since then, there's been a few changes. Premier Daniel Andrews has retired and Jacinta Allen has stepped up to take his place. Given this new leadership, and especially given the new state premier's close relationship to the airport rail project in the past, I think it's worth taking a new look at the state of Melbourne's airport rail link and ask why it hasn't been built yet and if there's any hope the beleaguered project can be brought back to life. Melbourne is a pretty big city, with a population of over 5 million people and an airport that reports at around 25 million passenger movements per year pre-pandemic. It also has a relatively extensive public transport network, with over 200 train stations serving 16 rail lines, the largest urban tram network in the world, and not to mention a significant number of regional and intercity rail services that converge on the city's main rail terminal at Southern Cross Station. Which makes it all the more surprising that a city of this size doesn't have a rail link to its main airport. Similarly, Sy Sydney built their airport rail connection over 20 years ago, and Sydney's domestic and international airport stations serve a combined 26,000 passengers on average each day. Brisbane, which is less than half of Melbourne's population, has been operating their airport rail link, called AirTrain, since 2001. And Australia's fourth largest city, Perth, whose population is even less than Brisbane, opened their airport line just last year. So why is Melbourne so late to the game? To understand that, it's worth taking a look back at the long and painful history of airport rail links in Melbourne. Funnily enough, Melbourne actually had an airport rail link in the past. Back in 1943, when Essendon Airport was the city's main passenger terminal, Tram Route 59 was extended to provide a direct link between the city and the airport. And this tram actually still serves the Essendon Airport precinct to this day. But as early as the 1950s, with rapidly growing passenger numbers and much larger aircraft, it was becoming clear that Essendon was no longer fit for purpose as Melbourne's primary international airport. So it was decided that a new airport would need to be built. The new, larger Melbourne airport was built in Tullamarine, in the city's northwest, and was opened in July 1970. During Tullamarine Airport's construction, there were proposals to connect the new airport to the city by rail. In the initial planning phases, a number of ideas were floated, including a rail tunnel directly linking to the central business district. But this was the age of the automobile, and Australia was growing obsessed with car infrastructure and taking little interest in public transport, especially rail. Reg Ansett, the founder of Ansett Airways, which is now defunct but was back then a major player in the Australian aviation space, opposed the rail link, imagining that people would be getting to the airport via freeways or even helicopters. Well, he was at least half right, as the Tullamarine Freeway, linking the airport and the city, was opened in time for the official launch of the new airport. And there have been billions of dollars invested into that freeway ever since. The train proposals did keep on coming, but each time the story was the same. Maybe we'd get a business case or a feasibility study, but the project never got past planning stages. In the 60s, then Transport Minister Edward Meeker proposed a bill that would have seen a rail link built, but the bill never got all the way through Parliament. In the 1970s, the Bolt government attempted to work with a French business who proposed the construction of a monorail to the airport with the backing of the French government, but they eventually pulled support and the idea ran out of steam. In the 80s, the Kane government, involving various key figures of European rail organisations, produced a series of reports assessing the possibility of an airport rail link, or even a fast tram link to the airport, but these never got past the planning stages. The 90s weren't very different. The Kerner government proposed something called the Rapid Transit Link, 
but that didn't even get to the part where they decide if it was going to be a train or a bus before it got canned. In 93, the Kennett government also proposed a rapid transit link and also failed to decide what kind of link it would be. Between 1996 and 1998, the topic came up again, and this time a spur line from the existing Broad Meadows line, now the Craigieburn line, was proposed. In 1999, there was another new Premier, Steve Brax, who once again committed to building an airport rail line via a public-private partnership. But as this project was going through the usual motions of business cases and feasibility studies, the Sydney Airport Rail Link opened, also as a public-private partnership, but was not doing particularly well, which you can probably blame on its incredibly high ticket prices. The Brisbane Air Train also opened around this time, and patronage was also lower than was hoped. It is worth noting that there were significant external factors contributing to the poor performance of Brisbane and Sydney's rail links, like the September 11 terrorist attacks putting people off air travel, and the collapse of one of Australia's main airliners, the previously mentioned Ansett Airways. This all led to the government canning the planned route via Broadmeadows, but it did set the stage for them to start considering a different route via Albion. The Albion East route would run from the state's main intercity railway hub of Spencer Street Station, now called Southern Cross, via West Melbourne, through the key interchange stations of Footscray and Sunshine, before running along an existing freight line that runs between Albion Station on the Sunbury Line and Jacana Station on the Craigieburn Line. Before getting to Jakarta, it would branch off and run on new track up to the airport. But in 2002, this plan was canned as well, with the government citing poor patronage estimates based on the performance of Brisbane and Sydney's airport trains. We did get an upgraded Spencer Street bus station out of it at least. As the 2000s progressed, passenger movements into Melbourne Airport were surging, and public transport usage was growing quickly. During this time, there were various proposals for an airport rail link, including from the Victorian government, the Melbourne Airport itself, the Public Transport Users Association, Melbourne's Lord Mayor, and even the Property Council of Australia. Of course, none of them went anywhere. In 2010, Melbourne's second major passenger airport, Avalon, had a rail link proposed by the Bellevue government, even though it gets a fraction of the passengers a Tullamarine gets. That said, his government did attempt to revive the Broad Meadows route, followed a few years later by an attempt to revive the Albion East route, but as usual, nothing came of these. In 2014, the Daniel Andrews Labour government came to power, and following the successful launch of the regional rail link project, there was talk of building a high-speed rail line to various regional centres in Victoria with a stop at the airport. But these ideas were shelved in favour of the current and what is probably the most promising attempt to build a rail link to the airport yet. So, the current project. In 2017, the Andrews government was coming under pressure from the federal government to build an airport rail link. The two governments both contributed funds to yet another series of studies investigating the same set of options of the Direct Tunnel Route, the Flemington Tunnel Route, the Broad Meadows Route, and the Albion East Route. But in 2018, something promising happened. The federal government committed $5 billion to the line's construction. Then, a few months later, the Andrews government matched this pledge, with the intent to follow the Albion East alignment. The estimated total cost of the project will come out to $13 billion, with the remaining $3 billion to be provided by private entities looking to invest in the project. With actual dollars committed to the project, and the Andrews government's good track record with infrastructure projects, this was looking like Melbourne's best attempt yet to get the airport rail link finally built. The government was talking to various contractors to get construction underway, and detailed plans were being output. But it didn't take long for the seams to start showing, and what I think were some of the issues that have led to the project's recent pausing. One of the quickest ways to derail a project is scope creep, when people just keep piling on new ideas only tangentially related to the original project, blowing out the project's timelines and budget. The proposed airport rail link did not escape this. Almost immediately after the project got its legs, new ideas were being tacked onto it. The first, and probably most innocuous, was to run the airport rail link through the upcoming metro tunnel instead of directly to Southern Cross Station, a 9km rail tunnel being built underneath the Melbourne CBD to relieve pressure on the city loop. This one wasn't too bad, as the airport rail link was already intended to share tracks with the Zunbury line, which the metro tunnel is going to attach to anyway and has the benefits of providing a direct trip between the airport and Melbourne's southeastern suburbs. But it was the start of the goalposts being moved, and would also take significant capacity away from the tunnel that could be better used by new electrified suburban lines to places that sorely need it, like Melton. 
The scope of the infrastructure the rail link would use also began to blow out massively. A key benefit of the Albion East alignment was the ability to make use of existing rail infrastructure and limit the need for new rail corridors to just the small section between the Albion Jakarta Freight Railway and the airport itself. But soon, plans began to include a brand new rail bridge over the Marabyong River, an absolutely wild three-level flying road rail interchange at the rail junction near Albion, a rebuild of the Sunshine Railway Station, which had been already rebuilt as recently as 2014, and a bored tunnel into an underground airport station, despite there being no lack of space and no nearby residential areas that might prevent a much cheaper elevated station being built. At least on that last point, the government eventually decided a cheaper elevated station was the way to go. And while some of these certainly added more value than others, all of them required massive engineering works and added significantly to both the cost and build times of the project. Then, however, came the big one, the Suburban Rail Loop. A very ambitious project, a very expensive project, and a project that, if we're all being entirely honest with ourselves, will almost certainly be cancelled before it's complete. The idea is to build a huge orbital railway around Melbourne, providing a much needed rail service that will allow travellers to get between different lines without needing to change in the CBD. But the project is estimated to cost a whopping $50 billion, and I don't doubt that number will get higher, and is not expected to be fully complete until 2050. Again, wouldn't be surprised if it's later or not at all. When the Suburban Rail Loop was announced, the government decided to bundle the ongoing Airport Rail Link project in with it. And by doing so, they took a relatively simple and, at least by comparison, quick and cheap project and attached it to a hulking behemoth of a project that altogether had a quite different purpose. So it honestly didn't come as much of a surprise that in early 2023, with both federal and state governments reviewing their infrastructure spending, that the decision came to put the project on pause. So far, it is just a pause, and some early works are being allowed to continue. But as part of this infrastructure review, some projects are expecting to see the can. So what does this mean for the future of the Airport Rail Link project? Call me optimistic, but of all the projects being reviewed, I'd hope this one would be more likely to survive. If only because it's just getting ridiculous that Melbourne still doesn't have an airport train. I can also imagine that the new Premier Jacinta Allen would not be looking to start a Premiership by cancelling a project that has such broad public support, but only time will tell. If anything, the project's bundling with the suburban rail loop is probably its biggest threat, as I can imagine that one being a bit more likely to be cancelled, and I just hope the airport rail link isn't caught in the crossfire. So, what can we learn from the airport rail link project? Firstly, I think to avoid this kind of situation in the future, planners and more specifically politicians need to keep these projects simple. The airport rail link should be built as the airport rail link. Yes, there can be considerations made for the future integration into other projects like the suburban rail loop, but the most important thing is just to get the project done. Similarly, don't overdo it. Do you really need a three-level railroad flyover or to rebuild a station that was rebuilt less than 10 years ago? Probably not. Also, and if I can indulge in a little bit of scope creep myself, for a city like Melbourne, building a route to the airport is important, but when considerable parts of the city are lacking any kind of rail connection at all, this can be an opportunity to provide them. A $13 billion budget is much easier to justify when the route is going to connect not just the airport, but whole new communities. There were some considerations for this with the airport rail link, with a new station planned at Keylor East. But there could have been more new stations along the route, which could have been attached to new transit-oriented developments, quite like the development around Mascot Station on Sydney's airport line. And these could have been used to help fund the line's construction while also providing the city with much-needed additional housing supply. Ultimately, I do hope this project is saved, but if that means the need to cut back on some of the more frivolous engineering works, and the inclusion of some transit-oriented development to aid the budget, then I wouldn't be too mad. Once again, only time will tell, but let's hope this doesn't become just another line in the already long list of Melbourne's failed attempts to build a train to its airport. Well, I hope you all enjoyed this video, and I'd love to hear your thoughts on Melbourne's Airport Rail Link project. What do you think about including more transit-oriented development along the line? 
Also, please do leave a like and subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this. I'm City Moose, and thanks for watching.